Welcome to the Fifth Trooper Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Fifth Trooper Podcast. Live show, surprise, happy Thanksgiving, all that stuff. We're trying to see if I can get Evan here from his home, logging in a little bit uh, differently. Usually Evan's with me, but this this week we're going to see if we can't get him to call in from, from the old homestead. So come on, Evan. Come on, Evan. Let's get you on here, buddy. Let's get Evan on. Okay. Hey, everybody. This is Jay. I am working on getting Evan in here in a second. And let's see if we can make this happen. Uh Uh-huh. 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 Okay. So how's everybody doing out there? We're doing a... uh, we're doing a live cast uh, here on Thanksgiving Eve, uh, seeing what we can uh, what we can make happen. Hopefully, get uh, Evan coming in here. He's he's coming. Hopefully. So, anyways, yeah. So we're doing a unscheduled surprise uh, episode sixty six, just like Order sixty six was surprise. So is uh, episode 66. So we're about to see how this goes. Uh, We're floundering a little bit here for a second while I try to get uh, Evan in. He's going to he's going to call in in a second. Let's see what happens. So go ahead. uh, Call in, Evan. Let's see. See Let's see if Evan can call in. All right, Evan, can you hear me? Yep. Hey, there's Evan. Nice. You made it. This is great. You sound good. Yeah, I can't really control my sound here, so it's going to be what it's going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's good. It's good. This is great. So, hey, surprise. (laughs) Surprise live show. Happy Thanksgiving. Working out a little technical difficulties with uh, getting Evan on, but he's on. How's it going, Evan? Good. What's going on? We are live on Thanksgiving evening or pre-evening or... Eve evening. What do you want to call it? Uh, it's Thanksgiving Eve. What do people call it when they go out to drink tonight? <sighs> death. <laughs> they call it death. Uh, anyway, so here we are. We're we're live and coming at you. We are uh, we are going to talk about all kinds of different stuff. So uh, we got uh, do backs out in the uh, out in the marketplace now. Uh, so I wanted to talk about Dubacks a little bit more. We can talk about, um, I'd love to talk about the skirmish games that we've been having and kind of our thoughts on skirmish um, and a, a bunch of other things. So Evan, let's start with the skirmish games. You and I have done two so far. What is your, what's your opinion been on them thus far? I mean, I like them. Um, I don't think they're going to be the format I primarily want to do, but I think they're fun. Okay, so what do you mean by that? I don't know. I uh, I play Legion for the 800-point game. Um, if I wanted to go to a game that was an hour and a half, I think I would play X-Wing still. But I've only got two games under my belt, so I can't really give you a good, like, uh, hard decision on uh, if I love it or hate it yet. Um, So I like them. I think they're fun. Uh, Someone in our group proposed doing uh, the next tournament day as just the 500 point format and I'll always play. Um, Mm -hmm. Like, I think so far it feels like dice variants can hurt you way more in the 500 point uh, compared to an 800 point. But, you know, like, that's just I've again, I've played two games. so I I really anything I'm saying right now is just from that. So I don't really have like a whole lot of uh, experience to really back it up yet. Yeah, that's fair. So what have so so far out of the two games, what are what have been your likes and dislikes so far? So let's let's start with likes. What have you, what are your likes about the 500 format? Uh quicker, um you can build a more thematic list. Uh, I think that's cool like uh when we played in our stream, I had just like a Hoth defense force uh mm-hmm. and I didn't feel like I had to compromise or make decisions I didn't want to be in that. Uh, so that was really cool. Um, I like the smaller play space, less terrain. Uh, those are things I all like. I like the fact that, uh, 
that everything's kind of just like the rules are like ooh, slimmed down, easier for new players. Um, things I, I don't love. Um, the pre-built uh, objective deck is cool, but I thought that was some of the customization in the bigger Legion is what you had in there. Uh, but then again, like, whatever, right? It's not that big yeah. a deal. Um, and, like, I feel like some units can be real abusive in the 500-point format. Uh, I just, like, you know, I'm thinking of, like, the creature troopers right now. But again, yeah. I've got two yeah. games, so I don't I don't have a whole lot to go on on that. It's just what my gut tells me. Yeah, and I mean, I feel... I'm with you. I think, like, Operative Luke is probably going to be pretty uh, rough uh, <laughs> in this format when he comes out. Um, I haven't... You know, I've been wanting to, but I haven't had a chance to put Vader on the board yet uh, in 500-point format. I think he might be... Even even with those operative command cards that are coming out, like that may be that may be kind of rough uh, with a Vader on the board. So that that may be interesting. Yeah, uh, Vader is going to be. I mean, way better. Uh, I think the out of core experience is way better with that. Even for either side, um, those are both going to be more fun. Any lightsaber user is going to have a lot a lot a lot better time trying to get to the fight. Um, I don't know. I think it's going to be good. Uh, well, especially when the operatives come out. Sorry if you hear my dog breathing. He's a he's a big boy and he just <laughs> seems to want all the attention right now. Um, uh, operatives are going to be really interesting. Um, I do like the fact that uh, you know you can build some kind of crazy stuff in this format, and like the game's over in an hour, so who cares, right? Like it's right. not like you put a ton of time into it to to get to an endpoint and then be disappointed. Yeah, yeah, and that, well, and I think the 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 thing that's been good for us uh, is, you know, I think with um, streaming in particular, like having only an hour match, you know, to stream has been amazing. And then I've just been thinking about that. Uh, I've just been thinking about that from a perspective of like playing. I mean, hey, like if there's ever a pickup game, like. We play Friday nights, right? And uh, you know, it's sometimes it's tough to get a couple games of a full eight hundred points in on a Friday night. So it'd be nice to be able to play. We could play a couple of the, uh, you know, we could play a couple of the the five hundred point games because it's an hour or so, and then you're done, and you can move on to the next game or play or play two against each other. You know, maybe switch it up a little bit. Yeah, I think what I'll, I'll do is I'll carry a 500-point list and then an 800-point list. And then, the, like I said before, I'll never say no if someone wants to play 500 points. Right, um, right. Because I still, I'm curious about it. And even if I ended up not liking it, um, I still would never say no because it's somebody else may really enjoy it. And, I mean, it's only, like, an hour and I still get to play Legion. So, like, that's the worst that can happen is, like, I just have to play Legion, right? Uh, right. That's, you know, whatever. Um, so, I think it's got... Pros and cons. Um, I'm getting the I mean, sense yeah, from you, Evan, the though. That you, get in there. Yeah, I'm getting the sense from you, though, that you're not a big fan so far. Like, I, I feel like if the scale were tilting, and I understand what you're saying. It's only you've only played two games. You don't know really know where you're at yet. But I feel like if the scale was tilting, that you are tilting towards not really enjoying it. Uh, so far, I mean, there are two games we played on stream. Uh, Dice variance has been kind of nuts. Uh, yeah, yeah, on both sides. So I didn't feel like I did anything very special or good or bad. Uh, okay. okay, you know, just kind of like it happened. And once you lose one unit in five hundred point games, yikes! That feels bad. Uh, but like again, like <laughs> whatever, man. Like uh, I got to play the air speeder, and it turns out air speeder is real good when it's can just do whatever it wants on the battlefield. And uh, one point four cannons turns out they're real good, and they can just shoot the whole battlefield. Uh, yeah, and yeah. I, you know, I got to play a whole rebel like uh, Hoth defense force without having to put tauntauns in or uh, have to make a lot of like sacrifices. So I think that was like that felt really cool when I built that list. Um, so again, like I just need to play more. But right now, uh, you know, I've got the Hoth list. So I'll keep playing that for a while, and then uh, probably build a little three by three Hoth mat uh, to go with it. And that's kind of cool because yeah. you don't yeah. have to build as much terrain. You yeah. build a couple of cool pieces and just kind of like like right now, all the uh, like dollar stores have Christmas Village stuff, so you can buy like uh, trees or snow things or whatever, and uh, make a cool snow mat uh, 
pretty easily. Or you can fight in a Christmas village. Just really, uh, you know, go crazy. Yeah, so it's really interesting. Uh, our local store all of a sudden had the new 3x3 three three mats. And well, I was just like, when when did these get released? Like, I... <laughs> I don't, I don't remember there being a big hub, hubbub about those. I don't know if anybody out there and uh, any of our listeners saw anything, but like I just, it just kind of came. And Evan, you were like, "Oh, hey, they got those mats at the store," and I was like, "Wait, what? <laughs> when yeah, did they kind of came out with zero fanfare?" Uh, yeah, it was. You know, as we all know, their releases have been all wackadoo. Uh, you know, we'll you know talk about it probably later, but everything got pushed back to January. Um, those mats were announced like way last year, right? Yeah. Like they were announced a long time ago and then we just got them our store anyway, just got them last week. Um, so like I, I look and stare at the same aisle of like product pretty much every Friday I go in and I was going to chide my, uh, my store owner for buying more of this, the normal Legion ones. Cause I don't really care for those, but then it turned out they're the, like the flat train ones. And I thought, well, oh, wow. Okay, cool. Like, Buying one three by three actually makes sense now, right? You yeah, we uh, point mat and then call it. Yeah, and you know we tried. We put for our first uh, skirmish match before we decided to go with our desert uh, board. We were actually going to use one of FFG's mats, but they were just so gosh darn busy. Um, not one of the new ones, but the the old the, the temple yeah, ones. These old ones stink. <laughs> they, they are not good. They, they, it's when you even when you're looking down from a camera, it's like what's going on. And when we went to the uh, the uh, uh, RPQ, they had a couple out and like, yeah, we hate them, but they're just they make the good three by six if you put two of them down. Yeah, yeah, the, and I, I think they're trying with the new ones, but I mean, I really think. Listen, we're one of the other companies doing mats, right? There's so many companies out there doing clever mats. Um, and doing different mats and doing all this kind of different stuff. I, I just wonder if it's kind of a wash for them. Um, I mean, I, I may pay buy one maybe, but like I was looking at the price, our store has them listed for 40 bucks. Yeah. That's Let's say you didn't, let's say you, you didn't know anybody else made mats besides this. You're paying $80 uh, for two and they don't even line up. Right. Like if right. you buy two and put them next to each other, they don't make like a coherent scene. So I think if you look at them just as a uh, a skirmish mat, I think that's fine. Um, like hey, uh, forty bucks gets you a mat that you know scopes out the battlefield for you. You could even just take like you know a marker and mark where some of the deployment zones are on the sides if you felt so inclined. Uh, you know you could do some stuff with that. that I think that's cool. But I do like the fact that you could just buy one and then make train just for that mat, and then you're like you have you only have half the job of creating the train as you would otherwise right yeah it's uh it's interesting you know and i I, i've so far i've been a big fan of the skirmish format um you know i've only played two games too they've both been with evan uh i'm a huge fan of it so far and i i think i'm gonna love it and it's because quite frankly i have a short attention span uh and and like uh, i don't have very much patience and like really regular 800 points of Legion were kind of stretching my patience and my attention span uh, to their max. And so it's been kind of refreshing to play skirmish games, especially with you, Evan, because so generally what happens, everybody is Evan comes over Tuesday nights to record the podcast. Uh, and we usually want to get like a full Legion game in, but it's hard to do that. Uh, you know, for two and a half hours or whatever, and then trying to record a podcast afterwards. But it's been real nice with the skirmish game. It's an hour. Yeah, you know, top, the, the 90 rounds are 90 minutes in the manual if you do an event. But yeah, we got through either to a concession or to a point where it was like hard decided within an hour. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, um, you know, I think we've just been kind of willy nilly putting lists together for the, the last two skirmish we did. I was really thinking hard about this next one, and I'd like to put uh, like a more cohesive list together um, that maybe makes sense for a three by three board. You know, I'm not going to try to like go out and stop, you know, curb stomp you on this one. I just want to like just build something that's built for that, like you did, like your Hoth list. Like that was really, really solid for that board. I just wanted to try out stuff that I don't generally like in an 800 point game. Um, yeah. And with all yeah. the points adjustments, with like the 1.4 cannon getting the range increase and the airspeeder, 
uh, getting a points decrease and Wedge becoming relevant on the three by three. Uh, I love Wedge, uh, quote unquote, best pilot in the galaxy. But when his ability uh, does not give you a free reposition, it just gives you a full pivot, and you got to tap to get it. I got to take a recovery to get it back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's a real hard sell when outer rim speed jockey exists to give you that cover too. Uh, but in the three by three, like you can move into a spot, hit it, take an action to pivot, do the full pivot, and then like still be on the mat, you know. And not, yeah. not actually yeah. fly off or get into a good position. No, I thought it was I thought it was great. Uh I thought you played it well. I thought it played well on the table. It was definitely scary as hell. Uh between that and the FD cannon, I was just like, I mean, listen, I didn't build the greatest list. I kind of like I built the list right before we played. I was like, ah, let's try this. Uh but like um it was scary. It was real scary to have both of those bearing down on me and no way to get rid of either one of them at that point. And so I think this is an opportunity and maybe, you know, as Evan and I do these, the plan is to keep doing them weekly uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, Cause they're quick and they're easy to, to set up and play. Um, but like, I think that uh, we, we need to start looking at maybe like you said, like units that aren't, 100% available to 800 points and start putting them on the table. Like maybe I mean, Pathfinder um, are better. Or Jin. Like fleets, right? Like fleets oh, finally have a, a spot. And I think that's 100% accurate because I love fleets. Uh, I just never wanted to buy enough boxes of them to make like a four to six <laughs> core fleet army. Uh, but fleets are real good uh, on that format. I mean, snows. Snows are always pretty good, but Turns out it get real good and then get into uh, range one real quick for a flamethrower. Um, armor is pretty strong. Think like the ATST can see the whole map more or less and fire on the whole map turn one, right? Yeah. I mean, that's oh gosh. Yeah, I'm, I've, I've already thought of just like get away from it, but you can't <laughs> in a three by three. Yeah. Yeah. I've already <laughs> thought of some, maybe. Some lit. And units that I, I I'm gonna stick with Empire just because I'm a, I'm on a huge Empire kick right now. And uh, again, I mean I have been for a long time. Droids tempted me for a few minutes, but then I don't want to put the rest of them together just yet because it's a pain in the butt. So um, I've just been playing with my Empire and trying to paint those up as I go because as I've been going, I'm almost got most of my Empire units completed, put together, and painted, which is I think huge. And if I keep painting them as I go, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, painting the shore troopers, right. Uh, just recently for our skirmish stream. So now I have two shore troopers and two of the mortars completely painted, which is, it just, I find that, um, and maybe for you, this kind of slightly off topic, but for people out there too, like I find events and like when we do these live streams, it encourages me to paint my minis. And that's been huge because, as much as I love to paint and as much as, as much as I love the hobby, like in my mind, sometimes I, I create a more like overwhelming experience to get it done than maybe it is. And so when we have these events or live streams, then I'm like, Oh yeah, uh, I'm going to paint these up. I'll have these all painted. And it kind of like focuses. I, I focus and encourages me to do it. Do it. I mean, that's fair. I mean, I just grabbed, um, I had a, an open box of uh, rebel veterans and then I bought another box to make the list because I two is probably fine. Um, and then I had the speeder. Then I had, I had two 1.4 cans I'm not using. And I never got around to painting them because I never really thought I'd use them. Yeah, I, I didn't yeah. put them together. I put together those two groups of uh, Rebel Vets the night before uh, to get them ready. So, yeah, I mean, like doing live streaming, having your units on stream uh, painted is better. Um, but the way I'm going to be keep like rotating through stuff to try it... Uh, I, Maybe I'll have time for that. Uh, I got to get my clones ready for for worlds, and they got deck sealing on them. So who knows when that's like <laughs> gonna get fixed? Uh, <laughs> I mean, water wicks right off. That's that's a bonus. That's a positive. But if you ever caught in the rain, hey, my yeah, I can leave those outside and all this what crazy weather we have right now, and they'll be fine. But uh, I mean, I get it. Like I'd like to get those done. Both all the traveling and work and everything, like let alone I can't even paint when I want to versus what I uh, what I need to. So it's I'd like to get them done. Like I'd like to have my airspeeder done. I've always wanted to get that thing taken care of. Um, and now that it and turns out in a 
a three by three, it's pretty good. Uh, maybe I'll give it a shot. Yeah. Uh, so that's skirmish. Uh, the other thing. So uh, there was a lot of news this week. Um, let me see here. Actually, Evan, I'm getting a little feedback from you. I can, oh, okay. I can check myself a little bit. Uh, so, a lot of news this week. Man, I'm getting crazy. Come uh, on. Uh, yeah, no. Is your volume on your headset really low? On my what? On your headset. I don't have a headset. I'm just talking in my phone speaker. Oh, that's that's what's going off. Yeah, it's so the speaker is uh, bouncing it off. Can, do you think you could try to find a headset? Uh, it's a blue like I don't have a headset plug and I don't have a Bluetooth headset. So, um, all right, uh, give me a minute. Let me try to figure this out. All right, well, just mute for a second. And then, uh, we'll, well, if I mute, I have to uh, uncall here. So, uh, let me just do this, I guess. Uh. All right. Well, Evan's gone. <laughs> all right. Now we can all talk. Now that Evan's left, uh, <laughs> it's bouncing off the trash can. Yeah, probably LJ. Uh, so the you know you know with the skirmish uh got announced last week. We of course have done two uh <laughs> two two streams uh of that of the skirmish that's been great uh the other thing too was r2 and c3po the the uh uh article came out and we got to learn more about them which is is good we, we're not going to see them till who knows maybe january hopefully and uh we'll see where that goes from there and uh you know and then lj he's in chat now but he he put out that uh post on facebook you know saying with the, a lot of the stuff is pushed back till january february and we're looking at more articles this month which is cool we'll get to learn about more new stuff coming out uh bummer about the push but listen i mean uh it happens i mean it's happening to us right now with our large six by four mats um you know we're we're getting pushed back and it's, it just man it stinks trying to trying to get stuff uh, from one one side of the world to the other side of the world. There's no easy or cheap way to do it. And so you just do the best that you can and things just get crazy delayed uh, sometimes. Uh, and sometimes it's act of God. Sometimes it's mistakes, but it happens. And, uh, you know, I think uh, hopefully with FFG, you know, the one thing I would kind of say with them is maybe, I wonder if there's a way, and this is me just kind of spitballing and like trying to figure out ways to do this, but I wonder if there's a way that they could do it where, um, you know, maybe they could have them in stock before they give us a date. So just say, I don't know, sometime in Q2 or Q3 and then get them all in stock in the, in the warehouse uh, at the distributors and then go, okay, time to release. And then, you know, and then, and then be like, okay, they're absolutely going to be here by, you know, the 10th of this month or something to that effect. Um, that would be, I, I don't know if, I don't know if it would be an easy fix, but it might be a way to kind of mitigate some of these longer delays. And my guess is, you know, it was probably a little bit easier when they only had two factions, but now they're trying to, uh, now they're trying to, uh, now they're trying to, you know, do four factions, right? Which is, which is uh, a little bit tougher. So LJ saying uh, that's essentially what they've been doing when it's in the warehouse. We'll get the exact dates. I'm just happy we're getting any sort of warning. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I would like, uh, you know, LJ, this is uh, something, you know, maybe you can bring back to them. I'd love to, I'd love to see uh, maybe a little bit more transparency into the reasoning, you know, like for instance, uh, we just got delayed on our mats because of a boat pro <laughs> boat problem. Uh, it's it's at sea somewhere. It's on its way, but you know, weather, big oceans, so on and so forth. You know, maybe a little bit more transparency into the delays that might you know that might be. Uh, oh, I see. They can't divulge that, but yeah, I mean, we can try, right? I think that may help people understand because I find that when you explain things to people, you won't make everyone happy in this world. 
but you can uh, you can always make a few people happy, you know, for sure. Um, Evan, how you doing? Evan still. Oh, there he is. Yeah, you getting more feedback. Oh yeah. All right, I'm probably just uh, get off the call then here. Okay, so Evan's gonna leave. Okay. All right, we'll do that or feedback. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know which one I like more. Um, okay, well maybe we'll maybe I'll start taking calls, Evan. How's that? If you want to go back to what you were doing, and then I'll I'll take calls, and you can just hang out, and we'll, we'll get you back on in a minute. Sure. Let me uh, just hang up. Okay, so if uh, anybody wants to hop on the calls, uh, I mean, I don't know, LJ, if you got a second, if you want to pop on, we could talk about this. Or if anybody else wants to pop on and call in, we will we will take uh, a couple calls now and kind of figure this out as we go. Uh, yeah, I mean, L LJ's saying it's because they produce a ton of games. Um, yeah, listen, I get it. I get it. I get it's a lot going on. I get they have um, a lot of irons in the fire. I'm just saying that at some point, these growing pains have to kind of, um, you know, these growing pains have to kind of move on because at some point we need to get product in um, and and get this stuff on the table. I mean, we are paying them money uh, for product. But yeah, it's hard. It's hard to run a business. It's hard to run this many product lines uh so i i understand completely um but yeah if they can you know maybe there's something they can do with as asthma day uh to try to be a little bit more transparent um but they they got to figure it out soon here or, or we're going to start losing especially newer players i think some of us um who who have been in for the year and who love star wars will will stick with it no matter what they do but I think, you know, that um, I think that some of the newer players just aren't going to understand, especially if they're coming from, especially if they're coming from a GW background where, you know, things just come out as they, when they're supposed to come out and they come out on the date they say they are. Uh, so, yeah. But hey, if anybody wants to call in, we are taking callers. Go ahead and dial in. I will, I'll pick up your call. We had Evan on there for a second, but we we're getting some crazy feedback from his line uh let's let's take a call here we go hello, hello you are on the fifth trooper podcast hey jay how you doing it's connor connor what's up my man uh you know not too much just finally getting around to uh painting some models just throwing a bit of uh primer on some uh clones you know trying to make them look a little prettier is it a uh, back primer uh no 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 it is a um white primer of a brand that is meant for you know little plastic men oh yeah yeah, yeah. that's okay the gw stuff right yeah 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 so uh yeah so how's that been going for you i know you're a little bit newer to the hobby and the game how's how's things how have things been in the world of star wars legion um, pretty good. Pretty good. I, uh, I mean, I'm no Evan when it comes to clones. Let me get that out right out the gate, but I'm, I'm definitely having a lot of fun. Um, I did go up to that, uh, hooded goblin event with him. I know you guys covered that to death in the last episode, but, um, yeah. I did just want to give a shout out to the hooded goblin for having such a, uh, unique and wonderful experience. Um, I would also like to thank a couple of the guys that I, played um the romeo brothers who are from canada they uh let me borrow a copy of strict orders when i got up there and realized i didn't have one very great guys and i would play them again in a heartbeat that's awesome well good i'm glad you're having fun uh it sounds like you're in for the i think you got bit by the bug a little bit here oh oh yeah yeah i'm a uh recovering gw guy and uh this got me right in the wallet but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm loving it, and I'm going to be in for quite a while. As long as those clones keep getting pushed out, whenever they get pushed out, I'll be in. Yeah, well, cool, man. Uh, thanks for calling in. Appreciate yeah, hearing no problem, from you. It's good to see you on again. Yep, yep. Later. Right. 
later. Uh, okay, so LJ, um, from the chat, uh, see, there's the big difference. So with GW, right, you don't know about the stuff till the week before. Um, but then we know, LJ saying, the reason we know that stuff is jacked up is because we know so much earlier in advance. Well, yeah, I guess it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. Like, what problem do you want to deal with? Do you only want to know about it a week out? <laughs> Excuse me. Or do you want to... Uh, you know, or do you want to know in advance, know it, and then be, have all the spoilers, have everything in advance, and then kind of be like moving around to when the, when the due date, you know, is going to be, it's, it, it just stinks, especially, I think what's happening right now is things are piling up. So it's not just like one thing, it's like this, and then this, and then this, and then this, right? So we're just seeing mass delays in in our product line, which I'm saying ours, and I mean like the one we're following, which is Legion. So we're seeing, you know, a uh, do back problem, and then we're seeing, you know, the Clone Wars getting delayed, and then we're seeing, you know, Rex and 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 uh, and Dooku were supposed to come out later, but then they came out earlier, and so it's just like, um, <clears throat> it's just kind of crazy, uh, you know, that how how things have kind of started to pile up right it's it just keeps going and going and piling and piling and piling and i think that's where we are noticing and we're going whoa 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 wait a second you know um it's tough i think they're a smaller company i i, I think that they uh are going through some growing pains i think this property is much bigger than they anticipated um I just I think that the only way they're going to win this in this my opinion is that they need to be um I know that they're trying to be transparent LJ with what you know they're giving giving you and what you're giving us um but I think they need to be more transparent I just I think they have to be if they want to kind of mitigate uh killing this particular brand and I think I know I'm I'm sounding like chicken little a little bit here uh I may be early early on that kind of problem but i'm just saying like i i'm trying to figure out you know i want to make sure we're blowing the horns now saying hey you, you know newer players are struggling because we're telling them hey i i want to uh i want to get you into the game but i don't you know i don't know when this thing is that uh when they want to you know you know when when it's going to come out the thing that you want to play so Evan, call back and see if let's let's try it again. I'm sure we'll get a little bit of feedback, but we'll just deal with it. You know, so so we got that stuff going on. Uh, since um, you know, since LJ's in, why don't we talk about LVO? So we got LVO going, uh, and that is coming up in January. Uh, there's been a bunch of announcements by LJ on the uh, on the Facebook um, Facebook pages. And I th I'm I'm excited. So there's going to be a ton of players there. Uh, they've got two heats basically that are going to go into a finals. Uh, they've got narrative set up, set up a team team set up. So there's going to be a lot of stuff going on at LVO, and uh, I'm really uh, I'm looking forward to going. We're we're going to be sponsoring a whole bunch of stuff there, which I'm very excited about. LG and I have been talking about stuff in the background um and uh yeah it's very very exciting lvo is going to be cool this year it's it's that it's one of those premier events um you know because i've been to a couple of them evan i see you're on hello evan um how's it going so lg i did not mention that so alex uh davy is actually going to be at lvo this year which will be amazing so if you're coming to lvo he'll be there you'll get to meet him uh if you haven't already, uh, Alex is a super cool guy, chill, nice to talk to. Uh, Evan, you met him at Adepticon, right? Uh, yeah, I got to talk to him uh, very briefly while he was eating a donut at Adepticon. <laughs> That's right, we gave him a donut. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, he's he's really accessible, very cool. Like, um, and having him at LVO is really going to be amazing, and and. Uh, and it's going to be great. Uh, yeah, that's the other thing. We're really, um, I don't want to get build up too many hopes, but it's looking like 90% we're going to be streaming LVO as well. Um, so we will have LVO matches on. Uh, there's going to be a number of Fifth Trooper staff 
at LVO. Um, we all are currently registered to play on different days. Uh, so we may, we may be able to switch that stuff up and, and get people in, but yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be great. Um, but yeah, so for those of you who haven't been to LVO, it's clearly in Vegas. Um, it's last year was the, my first year there. And, uh, I like, it, it was kind of more chill almost than most of these, uh, bigger events. And I think that's because of LJ and, and Brendan and crew who were, who were running it, but even like the top matches, uh, at LVO where everyone was just, there wasn't a ton of judge calls, like even though it was high competitive and it had invites to high command last year and invites to worlds this year. Um, it just felt like everybody was super chill and just relaxed. You know what I mean? I've been, I uh, didn't get to go last year, so I don't know. I'll take your word for it. No, but you know what I mean about like, uh, like it, it like kind of like Northeast Open was right, like how everybody was chill. At oh, North there, yeah, yeah, we had some like line of sight calls, but that was about it. Right. Well, well, LVO, like you know, you know, Northeast Open was uh was not a you know, there's not nothing on the line, just some dorky prizes that we came up with. So it's just a very like casual chill event, but LVO had definitely had that like air about it. Right. So it was very similar. And I think that really goes a long way uh, about our community. Right. Evan, like our community is super chill. I agree. Yeah. It's, uh, um, I mean, you still get like, like events you want to be competitive, but uh, also, yeah, like overall, like I've never, I haven't had, bad experiences with any uh uh legion player like i've had at other games like everything even when there's like a disagreement we both like still kind of like talk it out and we're like well do we need a judge yes or no and a lot of times like one or the other will just be like yeah man just take the extra die or nah, it's like light cover i think right like it's all everything's like really more or less relaxed with the community which is really nice yes yeah, so, and i mean the community is it's like what tell your story about dropping stuff evan that's my favorite story oh at our last event uh, yeah the comic zone yeah all right so uh one of our new players uh he had all his clones on like a plate more or less and uh he was trying to find his table and then he walked one way and then someone's like oh no you're at table two or something and then he turns around real quick and dumps all of his clones on the on the floor and they all smash and break. Uh, so without even like waiting two or three seconds, uh, four or five of us just got on the floor, hands and knees trying to scrabble to get these clones back together. And we all glue out. We're all gluing them together. And he's like, man, I guess I'll just drop. I'm already O2. And we're like, no, you're not going to drop. You know, we'll just, so we had like made an assembly line of uh, uh, gluing units back together. And then, uh, so once we get all that done, uh, we get his army back up. You know, we're all like, we held the time. I was TOing. I'm like, well, it's not fair. Give him some time here. So we got it done. And then he's like, oh, I'm missing a rocket launcher on one of my barks. And I'm like, oh, we'll find it. And then as we're playing, I look down at my feet and I see it. And I go, oh, the, his uh, his rocket launcher. So I bend down. And as I do it, uh, to make the tables playable, we put these long boards across. And they're kind of bendy. And I, had, I have a lot of dice. And so I had them in a tray. And I bent down to pick up the rocket. And my butt hit, pulled the board down. And as I stood up with the rocket, it threw my dice pail in the air. And that just shot dice all over the place and just rained down with all my dice from holding his rocket launcher. Um, <laughs> so it, it, was a, it was an event. And I just remember hearing, like, you hear the noise. Like, if you're playing X-Wing and you hear someone dump a token bin, it's like nightmare right it's uh you, you everyone like feels bad and wants to scramble to help pick it up because it knows that like god that sucks so uh uh <laughs> so we we all like ran around like everyone's trying to get the dice together and i'm just you know i'm staying there's holding this rocket staring at it i'm like hey pat got your rocket there you go hope you have a good game buddy <laughs> uh, so but like everyone did the same thing for me everyone just got like we all you know acted at once to uh uh, to get everything, you know, picked up to go. It was, it's, it was cool. It was a nice feeling. Yeah. And I mean, I, Evan, by the way, you sound much better now. So that's good. Uh, so, um, the, the funny part is I think like I was telling Pat, cause that was his first tournament. I was like, yeah, dude, you're not a Legion player until you've dumped at least half your stuff on the ground. 
on the ground. <laughs> like, it's just, I don't know. I've seen that more in Legion than I've seen in like any other game. Uh, but yeah, so, um, but yeah, so, uh, let's see what else we, what else we want to cover. Uh, we, we did LVO. Oh, uh, so we got a couple, um, Evan, why don't you talk about just games coming up in January? Uh, okay. Um, just games has a prime and then, ah, God, I, the date is eluding me. I want to say it's like, keep going. I'll, I'll look it up. Okay, so Just Games has a Prime, and then so does uh, Millennium Games. And then the month after that, I actually think it's Hooded Goblin again. Um, yeah. So there's three Primes right in a row up in the Northeast. Um, those are premier events. And uh, if you listen to The Scoundrels this past week, they, the one that just came out uh, yesterday or Monday, they, had, uh, they do enforce, unfortunately, the uh, 11-day new unit rule uh at some of these events so just keep that heads up when you're using new stuff because these are not rpqs were considered kind of like in the casual bracket and these are considered formal so that that changes uh but yeah just games coming up uh just games is a an, another amazing store um like they're one of the two places we've ever shown up where they had trains set up for us that was super cool and we didn't have to bring anything which is also cool for change um the train set up whole kit out uh, good time, good location. If you get a chance, if you're in the uh, like Rochester area, uh, Just Games is like a heck of a place to go play. So I'm really excited for that one. Yeah, I mean, nice guy. Uh, and actually, uh, not to like <laughs> make this sound uh, uh, like dirty or we're paying them off or anything, but they're actually going to become uh, they're one of one of the retailers who will be carrying fifth trooper mats. So the, not only are they cool, they're super cool because they're buying our stuff too. Yeah. That, that's also pretty <laughs> awesome. Uh, but whether they got the mats or not, I would still be, uh, it's again, like it's very rare. We go somewhere where terrain's just set up and they're like, Hey, you're the Legion guys. Welcome to our store. Here's terrain ready for you to go. Normally we're building it. We're supplying it. Uh, so it was just anytime I see that, even if it's not great, but they tried, like that means worlds to me more than uh, uh, like everyone having to scramble to bring stuff to get yeah. like the yeah. tournament together, you know? Yeah. So for any of you listening, um, it's January 11th. They've actually uh, just games, Uh You can go to their website and sign up for the prime. Uh, it's going to be amazing. We're going to be there. Uh, we'll have our mats there. Uh, they're like, we, you know, we just basically talked a whole bunch about how great the store is. So you guys can come up to Rochester, try to get your invite to world and come play with us. We're going to be playing. So that'll be cool. And then the other one is millennium. And then, yeah, uh, 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 January is going to be a crazy month. So we got two primes up here. Plus, plus I'm going to be heading out to LVO. Uh, it's just going to be nuts. January is going to be a huge month. So maybe you know this question, Jay. Does a world's invite from a prime in January does that go to the 2020 year, or is that still in the 2019 year? That, so that's still the one, the next worlds that's coming up. So all the so prime that's still in March will get you into. So oh, that still qualifies for. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All right. Huh. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the, uh, that is, I think it, it goes through till April or something, maybe. Yeah, I no. don't really remember when no, it wait, when, March, when, March, end of March. March, so no, it wouldn't go through April, it will go through February. So uh, I was thinking May for some reason. Um, but yeah, no, that'll get you into that'll, that'll get you into Adepticon 2020. So it's going to be interesting, and uh, Adepticon shaping up to be, uh, Worlds is shaping up to be quite interesting. It's going to be we'll see on all the invites that they're handing out uh you know how many people actually end up showing up in chicago to play yeah um they were kind of worried about that right like maybe they gave out too many i think they are i would yeah, be I mean, uh, yeah. but uh you know i think that's fine like um depending on how things go off for me you never know work or whatever i might not be able to go right so uh, it's just, uh, I don't, I'm excited, man. Like this is the first time I've gotten a world's in fight to anything I've played ever. Uh, so that's super got me jazzed.
yeah dude it's it's great it's it's amazing i'm i'm excited about it i'm i'm excited to be a part of it this year i'm still torn between streaming and playing but i think we got enough of us now on the team that w hopefully we can all do both right that uh, that's the dream uh and we got the rig down to a point where it's it's easy and manageable so we're not like you know trying to do too much with it which is great so that's all good um you know the other thing i wanted to talk about was really uh i'm sure you guys have noticed but we're starting to pump out way more content um i'm really excited about you know evan and i are pretty much easily able to stream once a week now with with little interruption to our daily lives right like i have the setup here in the studio so it's all ready to go so you're going to be seeing streams from us once a week um actually for our patreon members we we uh they got two week early access uh to a new video series that that we're doing uh with dash from uh scoundrels and mike cirillo from jetta journal who's now part of the fifth trooper uh they're doing a video game uh, uh playing streaming series as well uh streaming is a strong word we recorded it and then published it but uh, a video series that they're putting out um and we you know our patreon members got two week early access to that so you guys will have it december i believe it's the 13th is it's going to go live for everyone um and then also um i have a project that i'm going to be starting up here soon um it's been a while since i've done some of the hobby side of stuff and i i love the hobby side so much so um i have a project that i'm going to be working on uh some terrain actually that i have an idea for and so i'm going to be start releasing uh videos of me attempting to uh create my dream uh i am by no stretch of the imagination an expert on this uh on terrain at all but um, I enjoy doing it. I, I like to build stuff. Um, and I thought it'd be fun to kind of chronicle my, you know, the good and the bad. So I'm going to keep all the good stuff on there, but all the mishaps that I have as well. And and then, you know, how I'm going to work through those challenges. Well, you know, when we started, we did a lot of experimental stuff, right? So there's videos of you with that uh, rusted ATST. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep. On the channel. So we, we have stuff like you can go back and uh, look through some of our archives of video and find us doing some stuff like that, which is, uh, you know, we it's we we're just kind of like back then it was just spitballing anything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, that's right. So, yeah, I did do that back then. And then I'm just trying to, you know, I want to bring more content to you guys as you know, we do as a network as a whole. And so um, I'm really excited about some of the stuff we were lining up, some of the stuff I want to do, some of the stuff the rest of the group wants to do. So it's um, it's it's a you know it's just it's just going to be fun. And I'm hoping that this one project, the the terrain project that I have in mind, um, I have some cool ideas for it. And it's really just going to be you know maybe not as polished uh as some of our other videos or other vid videos out there but just me basically going okay here's what i'm trying to attempt here's my brain trying to make this happen and then and then going through that process and showing you guys how i go through the process and then you know it'll it, like i said it's going to have all my mishaps and my mistakes in there as well <laughs> so you know so you guys can see kind of how i tackle those problems make me more hoth train nerd <laughs> all right fine oh, uh, yeah. all right. but then you know we have uh we have several other ideas kind of in the bank right now uh for content that we're hoping to get started here in the new year which i'm i'm excited about um just a lot going on on our side and a lot going on in legion which is which is great uh, i'm trying to think what else what else is going on evan what's going on with you tell me all about you buddy uh, well, uh, I just got a chance to finish, uh, the new Star Wars game and without saying anything else, it's very good. So I'm, uh, I'm hoping, uh, FFG has been known to pull from, uh, different sources. So I'd be love to see some of those characters come to Legion, uh, or even some of those, like those new planets, uh, well, not new, but planets revisited have some really cool ideas for terrain. I think it'd be fun to fight on, oh, yeah. um, you know, that, so that, that was surprisingly good, uh, 
other than that, like with with work and uh, the stuff we do here and everything, like I haven't had a whole lot of free time. So um, I, don't know. I, I got to uh, take care of a neighbor's dog while they're gone. <laughs> going to eat some turkey. Uh, going to uh, take a nap. I mean, I got that lined up for Friday probably. <laughs> perfect yeah i was thinking about that uh you know not giving away any uh spoilers but like been watching uh mandalorian and uh, you know i think there's a ton there's some stuff there uh for legion in the future and uh you know and care not only just characters and units but also just terrain and like some of the planets were really cool i mean they're you know they've been mostly desert but like you know we'll see uh really interesting stuff um and then speaking of Mandalorian, actually, in two weeks, so December 8th, the evening of December 8th, uh, Krabek has been doing a live show every Sunday, like doing a reaction uh, live show to that week's episode of The Mandalorian. Uh, so if, you, uh, if you're up on The Mandalorian next Sunday, uh, Krabek has them every Sunday, but Two weeks from now, on the eighth, I will be live on Krabic Show doing doing Mandalorian uh, reaction live. So that'll be interesting. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. You know what I was looking at too. Um, I never played the game because I freaking refuse. Uh, but Battlefront Two, man, some of the planets and the places that they're on, and some of the like uh, terrain type uh, stuff on there looks crazy good it's good and, yeah and i was just like man i wish i could get those like just like pictures of those um maps and stuff you know for those for those planets or those those boards and and try to get like some cool terrain based off of some of that stuff you know yeah i mean uh uh you know i, I remember reading somewhere on um uh, forums or even the Facebook that people just take even Battlefront. They you find a video of Battlefront Two, uh, no uh, commentary, just audio of like the gun, like the actual game playing, and it's great to play with Legion because it actually gives you gunfire and like units calling orders and uh, Star Wars sounds and explosions. So that adds a little bit to the game, uh, yeah. which is also a cool benefit of it. Uh huh. So a uh, question from the chat. Uh, Connor wants to know if we think there's a place for neutral units that could be taken by any faction, such as scum or mercenaries or like that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, ch check out R2 and C3PO, right? They're, they're across two factions right now. So I think there's opportunity that as long as it makes sense story-wise, sure, why not? I, I think there's absolutely uh characters out there that could be done uh what's ben saying oh hondo yeah hondo uh probably you know i mean you could do let's see who else i mean i guess saw kind of cross as a couple right because he would have been republic plus early rebellion um he probably wouldn't go empire or, or cis but w what do you think evan i mean there's a ton of guys like uh uh look at um Oh gosh, the guy who was in Rebels with those amazing uh, mutton chops. Who was uh uh oh god, he he was in the Empire. Then it turns out he was like a deep uh deep spy for the Re Rebels. Um, let me find him while I'm thinking about that. But there's a okay. lot of characters. Like look at even um Palpatine right now. Like you could have Senator Palpatine, then Darth City, Agent Callus. That's it. Thanks, Stacy. Uh, Callus with those sweet mutton chops. He could be dual faction. Um, Palpatine in X Wing right now is oh, Stacy. Fact, he is dual <laughs> faction actually. I'm sorry, um, <laughs> but he could do stuff like he could be. You could have the senator plus agent. Uh, agent Cal. Jeez, not enough caffeine. Sorry, I'm getting tired. Uh, um, you the senator plus um, you know Darth Sidious. Uh, <laughs> you know, just switch them right. Like put two models in, flip the card, something like that. Uh, yeah, well, that'd be really cool. Well, and I think Connor's bringing up a good point, especially like with Mandalorian right now. I'm not giving anything away, but some of these bounty hunters kind of work for everyone, right? Like even like looking at Rogue One, uh, you know, the, the um, you know, they were using the early rebellion was using some bounty hunters and was using some kind of like, you know, sketchy dudes to get stuff done. So so I, I could see that for sure. It'd be interesting 
to pick someone that could cross all four all four factions just from a generational standpoint but i definitely think uh that there i think that there's um characters out there that that could do that and i think with the advent of some of this new you know new media and and new like the games the tv shows and stuff maybe with the new obi-wan tv show like there's going to be other stuff introduced that'll be you know cross faction no i agree i think it's uh but i cool but um they gotta be careful I know, like, we'll look at, like, the joke used to be Sabine in X-Wing before all the new factions, because she was in everything but, uh, she was in Rebel Rebellion, she was in Scum, uh, she had a, she flew a TIE fighter, she flew a, uh, um, the, oh god, Shadow Hunter, um, she flew a bunch of different ships, so she was in everything, but she flew TIEs, like, in the Imperial Academy, so she could have been there, too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a lot there's a lot going on. Um, oh, Tarkin's yeah. good. Yeah, Tarkin. Yep, that's a good one. So yeah, I th- I think there's room for that, and I think they've already started to set precedent for it, right? So just trying to just trying to find the right characters to do so. Um, I think four faction is going to be a little bit more difficult, but I definitely could see double. I mean, they already have double faction, right? Uh, C-3PO and, and R2-D2 are already uh, double faction. So, I, I yeah, there's absolutely opportunity for that out there. Shadowcaster. Um, That's it. It was a Shadowcaster, my bad. But, yeah, I think you'll see it more. Um, you know, there's all sorts of units kind of like, uh, I imagine coming out or soft announced uh, that would do that. Because you could just, I mean, we daydream them about them all day, so it'd be cool to see them come out soon. Yeah, for sure. And I, I'm... Very excited for, you know, the I think stuff like the Obi-Wan show, stuff like Mandalorian, stuff like uh, the new video game are just even more resources for this new canon that Disney's creating for new characters and new factions and all that stuff. Um, I, I'm going to be honest, before this newer stuff started coming out, I was getting a little... I'm getting a little worried because for, you know, in the prequel stuff, the civil war stuff, there's so many options and there's so many different faction possibilities. Like we met so many different things throughout uh, the three movies, plus the clone Wars series that there's all these other opportunities. Right. And I was getting worried outside of rebels, you know, I was like, I don't know, civil war factions. There's some main characters that they're missing like Lando and, and so forth. But like, they're not like how much further could they go with the original content now with this new canon and but now with mandalorian and uh the obi-wan show that's coming up and you know there's a lot more opportunity there uh to bring in other stuff i think for the civil war factions oh sure there's all the books and everything too i mean uh they haven't even touched any of the thrawn stuff yet right like it's it's coming uh uh, they just got to get enough of the Clone War stuff out so those two can feel like they have enough options for everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know. I think... Um, I think... I'm trying to think what else. Um, boy, what else you want to talk about, Evan? We So we're, we're kind of, you know, we threw this together uh, as kind of a surprise, happy Thanksgiving episode. So we don't have a ton planned, but... Um, trying to figure out what else is going on i mean we've got um we've got our next store event that's coming up in december um i think pat was talking about maybe doing it as a skirmish game like skirmish tournament oh yeah instead of a full 800 but then again um getting the reps in for lvo and worlds would be nice with my uh, full list but now that i know that like the like the Cards I wanted for the clones, all the core add-ons won't be out. Uh, kind of bums me out. And I don't really like the proxy. I like to play with what's out when it's out. So I might just maybe do the skirmish format. That might be fun. Yeah, I was um, I was really looking forward to having those pintles for the Stormtroopers for LVO and the Primes in January. But that is probably not going to happen. Yeah, but uh, I know we could do... Uh, that'd be fun because we can get like four or five games in of uh skirmish right yeah 
we just got to figure out and make all those cards for everybody. That's the only problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, th- yeah, that's, yeah, that's, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. So I think we can, we can figure that out. Um, but yeah, I think that's what we'll end up doing depending on where, where things land as far as the primes in January. Cause I know they're not having a store tournament in December. They're, they, they, pushed that one because i don't know some dumb sale like they want to make money or something Ugh, who Weird. cares yeah strange <laughs> just let us play our game uh <laughs> so for free uh or 10 bucks or whatever it costs <laughs> it's ten dollars uh, it is yeah free. right 10 bucks uh but yeah uh i mean that's that's been the hardest part is the way like um besides the regular like oh i want i want to buy me toys um it's hard with the push of all the releases because uh competitively speaking which i know we don't we get in a little bit of competitive here but we kind of leave that to the scoundrels mostly but it's tough for me as a competitive player or want to be competitive a competitive player anyways for like going to lvo because i had an idea for a list and now it's washed because some of the some of the units just aren't out and and the kind of the unknown of when those units are going to be out it's going to be tough to like you know i was really hoping to use lvo and some of these primes as practice against top tier players uh so that i'd be ready for worlds you know i used to get dobacks i uh, yeah i do love dobacks so much i mean it's not like your your faction only has a whole uh three kinds of units out i mean you have plenty of stuff don't worry about it so what known future unit for clones and droids is going to make the big... I mean, we really only know about the expansions and the tanks, so tanks, I guess. Oh, the um, the DC... the sh- I keep calling it the shotgun in the clone pack. Uh, the two black, one white, Pierce one. Uh, that's going to be nuts for clones. I'm yeah, really banking on that. And then the tank is going to be pretty nuts, too, especially with R2-D2. Yeah. yeah. Well, all right. Yeah, that'll be good. Well, maybe R2-D2. <laughs> that, that, that unit actually will be uh, so sorry, Mike. I I kind of read your question. I was like, I don't know. There isn't much announced yet, but you're right. There's more than I thought. R two D two. I would say for clones, the shotgun for clones, and I would say the tank for CIS or probably the big ones. That's yeah, because that tank for nuts. CIS to get is you an actual name of the weapon. It's the um the the DP twenty three trooper. Uh, like I was kicking around a list that's two shotguns, two rocket troops, two uh do you think two z sixes or two dc 15s i think and then rex and obi and with upgrades that comes out to just like just about 800 uh and i can handle just about anything with that list um so i'm pretty i was really looking forward to that the uh rp5-6 uh rocket trooper um so i'm i'm a little bummed because i really would like the versatility um but you know sometimes you throw a couple z6s and you get like four crits and whatever who cares about impact i guess yeah. So, uh, I mean, with the little droids, they get that sweet radiation gun. Man, that thing's good. Two red. Yeah, I and know. If they take I, a hit, they get a poison. That makes clones feel real sad. I'm really, man. I'm really wondering. I so I've been kind of <clears throat> fence riding with the with the droids. I was hard into them when they came out, as Evan knows, because we split a bunch of cores and stuff. And you know, I'm 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 playing droids. He took clones, and then. <clears throat> I played them once or twice, and I was just like, "Yeah, all right." Until there's more, I I just really don't care. Uh, I think the tank might be the thing that pushes me back over. So I mean, it's good. <laughs> it looks yeah. super good. High velocity gets to shoot twice if you don't if you just shoot the normal cannon. So that's eight red dice. Uh, I think it's like impact one, critical two. I think off the top of my head, uh, it's still super good. Uh, tank looks super cool too. Yeah, uh, it does look really cool, and I'm excited about it. There'll be more stuff. Um, you know, uh, like LJ said, there'll be some more articles coming. Uh, hopefully, they said by the 16th, so we'll get some more info on what's coming out. So I can, I, I'd like to see more of what they haven't planned for the new factions because uh, the tank was cool. I remember when we we talked about Gen Con, like the announcements were cool, like they didn't blow us away, right? Like we kind of saw, like yeah, each faction gets a tank. 
Um, yeah, they each get like their phase two in the super battle droids. Um, I'm really hoping for the next expansions just to be something really kind of off the wall uh, to make it feel real crazy, uh, just to really mix it up. Yeah. But I don't know. I've also, like, I think I said this last podcast, I mean, the one before, it all kinds of melts together at this point. But, like, uh, I, man, I found this renewed vigor for the Empire again, especially dewbacks. Oh, God, I love those. I love them, them sweet, sweet dewbacks. They're, I think there's been a lot of controversy around them, I think. And controversy is a strong word, but a lot of back and forth about whether or not they're good and whether their points are worth it for this and this. And, God, I Evan, you've seen them in action now three times. Uh, I've played them four, five times now. I I'm in love with Dubacks. I like them a lot. My only fear is they do spur to, if they panic to get off the board, so they get into this like downward spiral of uh, hard to rein them back in if they start spurring toward the board. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. I, I think they're really good. Um, Man, they're scary. That flamethrower makes them real mean. Yeah, the yeah, uh, the flamethrower is good. I like the pencil on them too. I I think I've got a good kind of mix with them with the HQ uplink, and kind of you know my strategy with them is I kind of hold them <clears throat> and do like a one spur shoot if I can, uh, and then with HQ uplink and then recover, and they kind of slowly get into position and then you know then they start to like okay now they're here and then they just start messing things up no they're i mean again like when they get close it's super good and then especially on a skirmish format um they get really tight uh so uh for for a new clone format um i really think ah so you know what honestly i've been oh i I misread your question for the skirmish format um i think that I was actually playing with like Rex, two clones without a Z6, two clones with a Z6, and then two naked barks. So you actually get like seven activations for a skirmish list with clones. Um, and honestly, sometimes you just throw black dice and they just show results. So I got to play with that to see if that's actually any good. But I think with that many units, uh, you just kind of try to get breakthrough or one of the like key positions because all those new cards say unit leader is not necessarily a trooper anymore. So you could use those barks to potentially uh, hold a position to get points now. Um, so the new, the new, the new uh, skirmish mode. I I did uh, Rex with four clones decked out. I think uh, Rex with a seven. Oh, jeez. Uh, we did do a rematch, uh, just not with the same factions. Um, so I'll somebody in chat, uh, chat asking, did we have a rematch of that first game? Yeah. So we had a second skirmish game, yeah. and the dice went the other way. So my dice. <laughs> I, put my, I just made a Rebel Hoff list, and the dice went absolutely the other way. Uh, so turn one, he rolled up with uh, uh, the uh, what are the Rebel? Um, uh, what are those guys? What was the core unit you had there? Sorry, the word just dropped out. Of the my uh, head. Rebel veterans. Veterans, yeah, he rolled up with veterans <clears throat> and uh, shot into a snow trooper unit in heavy cover and wiped and had what eight or nine hits, and yeah, then felt pretty good. Yeah, and then I had the seven go through and rolled basically all blanks except for one. I rolled one shield and six blanks, basically. That also felt pretty good. Yeah, wiped out a complete snow unit, like turn one. Uh, And so I already was down. I only had four activations, and they were all kind of wonky uh, units. And so then I was down in activation already, and then he just... Use the airspeeder and the and the and the uh, FD turret to just wipe out the rest of my my crowd. It was crazy. That game was crazy. It went it went completely the other way. Where our first game, Evan could not roll to save his life, and in our second game, I could not roll to save my life. So, <laughs> yeah, let me uh, yeah. try that hot list again. Uh, but I think with clones, I might go. I might try them again too. I'm not really. Uh, again, with skirmish, like whatever, you can play a game in an hour, and you can get like you can one night at a game night, you can play three games and actually yeah. get some data on your list to see if it's if it's good or not. You can kind of get a feeling if where your weaknesses are. The problem with the eight hundred point game of Legion, you really need like ten games or so with a list to kind of feel uh, feel it out. Um, but that's hard to always get that many games of the list before you start just losing hope, maybe prematurely. You know, sometimes dice just go bad. Sometimes you deployed wrong. Sometimes you played a counter list. So the nice thing about the smaller format is like you can just play, 
right? Whatever. Uh, you lose, like, eh, whatever. It's only an hour. Uh, so that's what's exciting about that. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I don't know, man. Uh, especially with uh, some units getting back on the table, uh, Skirmish opens up a lot of doors again. Yeah, I think it. Uh, I like it. I'm really happy. <laughs> Mike's saying that dice app. Yeah, man. Uh, Evan doesn't like it when I use the dice app. And so, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, skirmish, good. Jay likey. Um, but all right, I think we're going to wrap it up a little bit here. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us. We've been going for about an hour and 10 minutes. Evan, you want to try to take a call or two? Uh, sure, yeah. All right, so if anybody wants to call in, you have... A few seconds here. We'll we'll take a call or two if somebody wants to call in, uh, and if not, then we'll we'll bounce here. But I'll give it a give it a second here. But yeah, uh, for those of our American listeners, have a great Thanksgiving uh, tomorrow. Uh, go go spend time with your family. This is a great time to be thankful for everything that you have. I know that sounds very uh, rainbowy, but. Hey man, it's that time of season, right? Let's be thankful. Let's go spend spend time with our families. Let's have a let's have a good time tomorrow. Enjoy the most of us have two days off, Thursday and Friday, unless you're in retail and then you're dead. Basically this weekend. Right, Evan, you you worked on Black Friday. <laughs> I still get PTSD over Black Fridays. Black Friday. What? Evan you cut out. What'd you say? I I still get PTSD over Black Fridays. Yeah, Evan. Evan wakes up in cold sweats on Fridays. He goes, "Wait, today's Friday." <laughs> oh, you know, man. it's funny you joke about that, but uh, I get I wake up in fear that I didn't set the plano correctly for the Black Friday sale, or I don't have a plan where to put the crowds are, and then I have to like take a minute to think that I don't do that anymore. But yeah. I did that for like nine years, man. That just grains into you. Ooh, we got a call coming in. You ready, Evan? Yep. Here we go. Welcome to the Fifth Trooper. Who's this, please? Hey, this is Ryan calling. Uh, I was one of the two guys at the Hooded Goblin from uh, way up in northern Ontario. Oh, hey. Hey, how's it going? Good. Um, You know, we were talking a bit about the clones, and I know we got those delays on the the Trooper pack, which kind of sucks. But honestly, with where clones are right now, with the eight activation, OB-Rex, six phase one troopers, other than the quote-unquote shotgun we keep referring to it as, uh, do we see a place for the officer, the specialist, or the captain, the specialist? Uh, yeah, so- actually. I think the um, the one who gives you the the training slot, the officer. Let me, yeah. let me open up this builder here so I can look at him here. For, yeah, I think right, it's so a captain. Uh, yeah, the, the phase one clone captain. Uh, the What's interesting about that is he gets a training slot, and then you can put Overwatch on him, um, and that makes being able to share those uh, those support tokens even stronger, right? So I think yeah. that's the play. I don't know if I like the clo- the tech guy that much, but um, I mean, being able to say, "Hey, I'm not suppressed for a turn," could be really strong. And maybe, you know, I'm thinking maybe I dump my two extra clone guys, my my fifth troopers, if you will, um, and add the phase one clone captains in there and just kind of jostle around some points to get those in there because being able to say, hey, I grabbed this objective and then just being able to run, even though you've got some suppression on you, it's pretty strong. Mm-hmm. What I've been trying to fit in is uh, those captains with, uh, what is it, offensive push Ooh, with yeah, that cool. uh, the DP so that you can use Rex's two pip move them up, gain the aim token, get that range three shot off, which will give you kind of a an effective, just shy range four threat range for that turn. No, yeah, that's actually really good because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of debate about how that card's played and how they take it. Um, people are saying, you know, do binoculars, but in clones, you really can't give up a dude's action to use binoculars. You just don't, like everything you do has to be very efficient. Um, and so mm-hmm. to have the offensive push to move up get the aim and then do take that clankers to get some good, uh, good range three shots in there. That's actually a very good idea. It's funny you mentioned binoculars because I've, anytime I've heard people say, take binoculars on clones, I think clones come stock built with binoculars. It's called take an aim token and be within range one. <laughs> it's built into <laughs> the little helmets, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's I, with them, I tried it once and it just, like I thought I could double up on names, like I give out name and I take a name, 
uh, it just didn't seem efficient. And then with like you know, like you were saying, like being able to get that free aim for the move from offensive push, um, that makes them like hurt even more. Because how many times have you thrown a Z six and really wished you had an aim? You know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know at the RPQ you're running the fifth trooper with the Z six squads. Out of curiosity, what was the uh, the play behind that? Uh, so the Z the with the uh, Z sixes, I I put them with Rex, and I figured I'd move uh, the Rex up with the two uh, the Z. Gosh, I always call them Z six when we said Z. My brain just moved right over to it. Um, <laughs> Amer- <laughs> American Canadian. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. I, if I'm going back and forth, I apologize. No, I you gotta go. You gotta go, Ryan. Man, see you later. No. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, so I moved up with those extra guys, and so I thought I could make them a juicy target. And then with the extra guy in each one, it's an extra hit point that they'd have to stay a little bit longer. Um, what I like about the Z6s is uh, they, even when you're down to a captain and the um, the heavy gun, you always feel like you've got a little bite left. When you get down to the DC-15, sometimes you feel like you're just giving out a suppression because you're shooting to heavy cover, where sometimes with this, um, the heavy gun, you throw those six die. And you get like at least a couple crits in there just because you're throwing so many. Um, and then with the take that clankers, I had uh, one play where I moved up, um, did the scout two, then I did take that clankers uh, to give me a range two range four um, Z uh, Z six shots into an enemy unit, and that like knocked a few off. And so even though they're kind of like a bait unit, um, they also uh, were really mean. Like sometimes you just throw like six hits, and you're like, oh, okay, I, did, did I earn that? I don't know, maybe, but uh, they, it half bait, and then I, sometimes they turn out to swing the game for me. So uh, you know, the idea was just get them up there and hope they survived on a point while my rest of my army comes up. Um, mm-hmm. But they ended up being kind of the stars of the show. Yeah, I had something similar that day, but uh, where you took the fifth trooper, I gave the those two units frag grenades because okay, with the Z gotcha. six and all the surge tokens, uh, especially with all the Tauntaun players out there, I figure they're going to get in range one, uh, throw you know what is it uh, twelve white eight red dice surge crit with a uh, fire support, you pretty well delete a unit if Dude, they get feels close. So good and it works. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's nice to see some some Republic players out there really starting to come up with some strategies because there is a while, I think, I've seen online people saying, oh, droids get the no suppression thing, clones got nothing, and it's like, no, they have a lot of stuff. They just take a lot of finesse to play with the token sharing. Yeah, it's actually deceptively hard because on the surface, it's like, well, I'll take an aim and I'll use it when I want to, but do you take that aim? Because, man, that dodge might help you. Or, man, I should have taken two standbys if I could just double fire it. Or, oh, I didn't leave a guy just out to get that range one bonus. There's actually quite a bit to it, and it's the first like few times I played clones. I thought I they were terrible because I didn't really quite get it. Uh, but, no, there's a lot to, like of, of like minutia to them that you don't really you think about when, you read, when you're reading them on paper. Mm -hmm. And it makes me excited and not excited for the tank at the same time because the tank doesn't count as a clone trooper. So it's eating up like 200 points that could be a clone trooper. So, Yeah, it's tough because I think I'm thinking maybe I dump Obi for the tank on a couple couple runs just to see if maybe that becomes such an angry threat that they have to deal with it or... uh, (laughs) Uh, Obi can be that, or sometimes he dies before he even gets there. But the tank will at least get a couple shots off before it, um, you know, before it goes down. Hopefully, uh, but like I got to see more of those cards. You know, all we see is mm-hmm. um, the Jedi who she can issue orders from her, like you can, uh, Deacon, I think. Yeah, and has Inspire too, which is pretty nice for clones right now. I think they struggle with suppression a lot. It feels bad. Yeah, I know Rex's uh, Rex's we're not programmed is a is a powerful uh, like get me back in the game thing when they're shooting at Rex and then he can also inspire two off people. Uh, but you, mm. you almost have to take strict orders, you know? Yeah. Um, I find whenever I've had units kind of buckled down with like three suppression, four suppression, those are generally the ones I use for um, fire support just so they get their full shot and another unit can aim and shoot. Dude, it's so good. I had to, uh, mm-hmm. I was playing, I got hit by a wicked, uh, uh, Diox grenade from uh, Bosk, and I was using fire support so they wouldn't take the poison damage. 
Because right, so at the end of the activation. I think. Oh yeah, yeah. Because they don't even activate; they just flip the token face down. Yeah, yep. just like I'm throwing like these garbage fire supports, but I'm just like, not like this, not like this, boys. So the boys are still hanged around; like they'll eventually get it if I run out of fire support. But uh, it was like my only chance because I didn't. They don't have med bots yet, or like right to take it off or to heal a guy. So that just kind of stunk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's neat to see what they can do with so few units on the table. Yeah, uh, or, know, or at least most, so much. Most let's say eight activations is bad, but with them, it's pretty okay. It's kind of concerning for the future, right? Once they start getting more, if they get up to 10, 12 activations, that's going to be scary. Ooh, mm-hmm. give me some of those strike teams. Maybe. Will, but yeah, it'll be scary. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if clones and uh, droids will get that same strike team thing because the droids seem to already have a, a pseudo sniper with the trooper release. So I don't know if we'll right. get something like that. At least an oh, image. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. the, the little sniper guy for the add on. Yeah, he's ranged yeah. one to four, two red, I think. Uh, Maybe red and a white that. critical one. Yep. Okay. So your your odds of getting one through are pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yep. So yeah, who who knows? We'll we'll have to wait for one of those uh, new articles to come out, which I bet you will have a uh, a spec ops and a uh, operative slot per new faction, and then our Iden and uh, what's her what's his name Cassian in the the third article. So we'll, yeah, we'll probably see. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, instead of units, you're going to get more articles for Christmas. So, Merry yeah. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool, hey, thanks right? for calling in, man. Calling in. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks, dude. Have a good one. Yeah, you, you too. Have a good one, man. Thanks. All right. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, so that was Ryan from up, up in the Great White North. Uh, you know, I pretend like Canada is so much further, but we're basically U.S. Canada, right? Like we're so close and so cold and white and snowy that it, we may as well be Canada, where we are. Fair. We're we're about an hour from the border where we live, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we get we're like the snowiest place in America, basically. So fun stuff. Uh, but yeah, cool. Well, thanks everybody for joining us on Thanksgiving Eve. We appreciate you. We appreciate you guys listening, following, and. Uh, interacting with us thank you so much for for your support and and just being cool people and uh i know evan evan is looking forward to tomorrow because his little raccoon paws are gonna get some hands on some some food right <laughs> right <laughs> look if you're gonna just throw it all out i mean i might as well eat it <laughs> so uh so hey everybody uh you know if you're if you're not in the u.s have a great rest of your week and a great weekend if you are in the U.S. and celebrating Thanksgiving, have a wonderful holiday with your family and uh, t- try to stay safe. Don't go out on Black Friday. That's that's crazy talk. Just go to Amazon. You can buy whatever you want there for just the same amount of money, and they just ship it to your house. It's like within a day or two. So you know, don't don't support the uh, don't support the monster, everyone. <laughs> but uh, yeah, 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 except for uh, yeah, buy our mitts. You don't have to go anywhere. You just go on our website, and whenever the boat gets here, I'll ship it to you. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, if you got the uh, sidebars, you should be you'll be getting those. I'm gonna be mailing them out next week, so you'll be getting your sidebar soon, Matt. Uh, not till January, it looks like now. But uh, yeah, thanks everyone for listening, and uh, we look forward to seeing you. Well. Or for you listening to us next week, I suppose. Right, Evan? Of course. All right. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Everyone, stay red. <laughs>